Hi everyone. <laughs> well, I just, I just want to kind of like come on and it'll have a little bit of a, um, I guess a decompressed chat. I just filmed a video on the update of Ollie London detransitioning and like talking to turfy nonsense and all this shit with Tucker Carlson and all that stuff and Piers Morgan show and just becoming like a hateful bigot. It's like, obviously, growing up in the era that we did when we were young, you you know, we were never like taught about gay stuff and all, all the people that I surrounded myself with when I was a child, you know, there was no such thing as gay or LGBT or trans or anything. It was all very, you know, hush hush and you kept it secret and all. And it's just, I, I, it feels weird to see someone who is, will attach themselves to the LGBT community many times to then suddenly go full circle and then go to, uh, turfery nonsense. I just don't understand how, like, people like this can exist without any kind of, like, remorse or any kind of, like, conscience about what they're doing to a community. You know, I've said before in, you know, in other times that I, you know, in in a weird way, kind of understand slight ignorance when it comes to transgender or LGBT issues from, like, small town folk who, you know, have lived in the place, have never moved out, you know, don't know anyone who's LGBT. Like, I mean, there's a, obviously a limit, but, you know, when they don't surround themselves with these people, they wouldn't, like, why, you know, why Keith, who's lived, who lives in a small cottage in, cottage town in Devon, like, how is he ever going to know anything about trans stuff? But, like, and the chance of him one day just going on the internet going, I'm going to type in transgender, what it means. Like, these people will only get the, you know, these kind of people just get all of their facts from Facebook and all the, you know, news and all that bollocks. So, although it's not okay, in a way, I kind of understand some of those where people, why are people a little bit ignorant to it. But people like Ollie London, who is apparently, like, has merged himself into the community and is part of the community, the fact that, like, he can just go against it and be so hateful after so long and, like, go on to, you know, talk shows and things that cater to the far right. And just happily do it and then just go so full on anti-LGBT and go full turf. It's really weird to see. Although, like, it doesn't shock me. It still feels a bit strange. And I just, I don't know, after filming that video, I just, like, I feel just, I just have a lot of, like, pent-up aggression in me. It just makes me so livid. Like, you, you can't just ignore him anymore. Like, this isn't just something that he's doing on this, like, he's now actually aiding anti-LGBT rhetoric. And it's, it's... It's just infuriating. Like, I just don't... I don't understand how people can do this stuff and just feel happy. Because you know full well. You know full well. People like Ollie, six months time, there'll be a brand new story that comes out because this is going to get him attention for a little bit and then something else is going to happen. We, this isn't the last we've seen of him. Like, this is, you know, this is going to be the cycle that happens as always. There'll be something else that comes out. And the same, you know, there's other YouTubers like Ariel Scarcella who I used to be friends with years ago who suddenly went full on, like, turf because... She had some views and like originally her views from, from like the very, very start when all the stuff kind of started kicked off in some aspects. I was like, I understand what you're saying to a certain degree, but then she went full on like turf, which of course, I mean, I've, I've stopped being friends with her years and years ago. But it's, again, it's weird to see someone that you've known so long who was so like liberal suddenly go so far right anti LGBT and like now associating herself with the people that want us dead. I just... It's weird. It's so strange to see the cycle that some of these people go. And there'll be other people who do this. And I, I said in the, I said in the actual video, I mean, this video is going up afterwards. So go and watch the video that I made um, if you want some more context to this. But I said it in, I said, I did say this in this, in the actual video, but this shock attention seeking tabloidy circuit that kind of happens with media. I think it's t like TLC shows in America. That's all. I think I'm pretty sure it's TLC. The ones that have like all the, you know, my, the six, the, you know, 1000 pound sisters, whatever. Like when they do like the kind of shock factor like my strange addiction where people are eating stones and eating bed sheets and like eating ashes like it's these kind of like tv shows they're very jerry springer very exploitative it just it's so infuriating that that's such a big thing still and it's really sad like it's such a sad thing to think that people can just do like extreme things and hurt communities and they get so much attention for it because the media love it and people lap it up as if it's like this like wonderful thing and i just I hate exploitative media and I hate exploitative, sh like, shocking TV shows. Like, it's the 90s still. Like, that stuff was very 90s TV. And the fact that it still happens now and they just make, like, make mockeries of these people that go on these TV shows and promise them things and tell them things and then all of a sudden it's something completely different. Like, I hate that this still happens. 
Which is why, like, there is so much stuff that me and Luxario react to. Like, obviously, I did the whole Playing It Straight TV show that happened in the 2000s. Where, you know, the shock was that some of them were gay. Because being gay was awful. And they're the losers. And they're the ones who should try to avoid. And, you know, Luxario talking about the only way. Uh, uh, there's something about Miriam. Which is, like, a dating show for straight men. And, like, the shock at the end is the woman's actually a man. Like, it's... I hate that stuff like that is still happening now. Yes, in a slightly different area, but it's still this kind of like shock content where it's, oh, look at these morbidly obese people. Let's watch how they can't walk and watch how they can't survive. Like, it's just, I hate it. It's, I hate it. Just like, I don't, I just, I'm just confused how this can still be a, like a, a shop, like a genre of things that people just lap up. I don't really know what this video is to be honest. Again, I, I'm kind of just rambling, but I just, I needed to kind of chat and decompress and kind of do like a, a slight behind, <laughs> behind the magic video. But yeah, I just, I hate it. I really hate it. I hate where society is going like this. And things like now Twitter, Twitter is just like, at the, I, it's weird how like the longer a social media kind of exists for, the more toxic and hateful it becomes. It happened with Facebook. Facebook, when it first originally there, was actually really cool. It was fun. We chatted with friends. It was wonderful. You know, it wasn't getting fake news spread around everywhere. Like you didn't just see some like shocking headline and Keith is like, oh yeah, that has to be fact. Therefore the vaccines are killing people. Like this never happened back when Facebook happened. Like st started to actually like come up back in like the, you know, the mid 2000s. And then now it's just like a cesspit of like, boomer nonsense and twitter's become that now twitter is becoming that especially with elon now buying twitter all of a sudden it's just, it's just a, a cesspit of hate what, what yes some positive things happen on twitter. i i do sometimes enjoy twitter but now I, i'd be on twitter for like two minutes and i'm already finding people just like sharing hot takes or controversial opinions or fighting with other people it's just I don't understand why this happens. And Twitter's now dead. Like Twitter is, I can't see how Elon Musk is going to be able to bring this back. Especially because of the insanity that's happened. I don't want to go through the whole thing of what's happened on Twitter really. But or, I'm sure people on Twitter understand everything that's happening with the blue ticks and the verifications and the fake things that were happening. The fake profiles and the comedy is now allowed on Twitter unless it's about me. Banned accounts. Like that's, Twitter has now just become a cesspit of like unwanted opinions, hot takes and hate and dogpiling on people and like lack of forgiveness of one anything or just like it's just a hateful app now and again that never happened back in the early days and like late 2000s when that came out it's almost like that's the next thing now that's becoming the cesspit the older they become the more toxic they become and i don't understand why instagram is slowly going that way as well with their weird promotions maybe in a slightly area but instagram is becoming, becoming a mess because of how they like hide posts now and they all want to be a tiktok and they're changing all the way it works for no reason just because they want more money and it's just i mean i'm glad youtube is still good um, I mean, I, I feel like YouTube's not really a social media. It's like, it kind of borderlines a networky kind of media source, I guess. It's very, it is very different. Although there are bad cases of like awful people on YouTube as well, but I think it's very different. So I'm glad that we got this, but like, what's got, what, what's happening? Cause like Twitter's now going to die. Twitter will die. Twitter is going to die. There's no way that it's going to come back from this. I cannot see it coming back from this. Instagram's gonna start dying, especially because younger people, like, when you talk about younger people now, they just talk about TikTok. They don't talk about Twitter and tic uh, Twitter and Instagram. I never, I rarely hear them talk about it. I actually hear them talk more about Snapchat than Instagram still. So what's next? Like, what's gonna come up that's gonna overtake that? Because there needs to be something new that, you know, isn't a cesspit of hate. And also, like, even doing things on Instagram now is really stressful. Like, at one point, you could post things and, like, you know that your followers would see it and it was fun and it was interactive. And now it's, like, stressful because, like, you just never know what you're going to post, what might get picked up on the algorithms or what might get hidden and what might not get hidden, who's been shadow banned, who's not been shadow banned. It's just more stressful now than actually, like, fun when it comes to things like Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. My mind's kind of all over the place today. Especially because now I've just done this Ollie London video. It's just a bit much. Although I will show you one thing that is fun. I have a load of Pokemon boxes and collection things here to unbox, which I'm very excited about doing after this. And the first one I'm doing is this uh, Arceus collection box. It's got 10 booster packs in it and like two um, Arceus cards, which I'm really excited about. Do you know, I have to say, um, rebirthing this second channel has actually been so 
nice. It's just it's just nice to like have a little bit of a and my my job in my job when it does YouTube making videos is not stressful, but it's a less stressful channel in the sense of like it doesn't you know it's a bit more laid back more kind of you know relaxing uh i don't have to like worry about what i'm saying or being like oh, i have to edit that out i have to just like i just chat and talk about my life um so like it's quite, it's been so nice to kind of just have like a more of a relaxing time <laughs> i just wanted to ramble a bit because my mind's a bit like i just need to kind of decompress from watching ollie london just be a hateful turf and i know making videos and things fuels the interest in him and feel and i get that but like I am so, I'm, I'm the kind of person that can't keep the mouth shut with some things, some things like this, especially when you're going to go on like anti far right LGBT groups. Like you've gone across the line, you've crossed the line now, and it's like bonkers, totally bonkers. Anyway, thank you for listening to me ramble. Let me know what you feel down below. Um, I'm gonna go have uh, some food and then I'm going to entertain myself by filming some Pokemon stuff and have a bit of fun. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Horseface James. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for following me over on twitch come follow me on twitch and maybe you can be in the next twitch shout out there's a link down below it's really west over there but thank you for my lovely patrons who you can see on the side of the screen here and thank you to my top tier patrons benjamin baker bethard kaz.thom shell herman christina carl con pemberton erin grace heather mcfarland i at jenna beth herman joanna kraus caitlin wright Catherine ritter kelly bowser chloe louise lisa pennington luke peterson rachel dc biscuit robin scott Steffutech, and zoe savior thank you so much for being a top tier patron you could be a patron as well there's a link down below 